Hey everyone, welcome back to the Zelda Informer Podcast, I believe episode 19. There is only two of us this week because we had some awesome, cool plans that we sort of teased last week that seems to have apparently fell through. For now. Uh, yeah. For now. For now. Who, who knows? Uh, so I didn't really plan to bring out any special guests. Uh, it's also a little different this week because uh, because of everything that was going on. I didn't really gather up fan topics. Plus, for those who know, like I don't have that document anymore that kept track of the fan topics that I just started <laughs> because of my computer being fried. So um, that's okay. Well, once I get my new setup going, which, by the way, happening this week, I, I have like everything coming. So that's cool. Uh, thank you to everyone who uh, donated to help out uh, a week or so ago or two weeks ago, however long ago that was now. It feels like it happened like eight months ago, even though it wasn't that long <laughs> ago. <laughs> no, it was, it's been a long process since then. I miss having a proper workstation. Um, anyways, I will be doing a live stream of putting that computer together because it's a desktop computer and I'm building it. It's my first build since 2007. Um so come watch me screw everything up and blow up my computer. <laughs> hey, this is at least this is under warranty. So that's true. <laughs> if, I do, if I do break something, I can get a replacement. <laughs> um, some of the parts arrived today. Uh, I think everything else is arriving tomorrow except the case. So when you're listening to those podcasts on Wednesday, it will actually be the day of the live stream. I will be streaming it that evening. Um. The stream will probably only be on Facebook. I'm, I want to get it on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube, but I only can because I don't have that computer put together. I have to stream from this really crappy laptop, <laughs> um, and I have a feeling there's no way in heck I can stream to all three services at once. Um, there is a chance that I could like have a webcam stream to Twitch and YouTube for it, with a separate stream from my phone going to Facebook because uh, apparently the I heard the live on Facebook stuff works really well on mm-hmm. your phone it does um, so I might do the it might be it might be possible I'm running two separate streams entirely um, and I it, when, when I do that I will also be I'll be doing like a QA and a answering questions about Zelda uh, while I explain what I'm doing for that book because I know we had some people on Facebook that expressed um, that they're kind of tech enthusiasts too uh, more on the software side and they want to see uh, more in depth on the hardware side and I used to be like a, a part of Geek Squad and went to college like in the past to like do hardware repairs and stuff um i have i've been i'm way out of touch though um the the gpu arrived today and i just took it out of the box to make sure that you know it wasn't broken make sure it wasn't because the the actual box it came in had a big dent in it so i was like "Uh oh um i took it out and i'm like um this thing looks like three times the size of the last time i installed the gpu in a computer (laughs) <laughs> so, um, I'm a little, I'm a little out of out of touch because apparently, uh, even like the 980s, 970s, 960s were way bigger than back when I installed uh, some AMD something. I don't even remember. It was a really crappy card I got at Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so obviously the second person of the day, you've seen him on screen or uh, you've heard him laugh and comment a, a few times here, is Mr. Alfred. Hello. The Again. co-host, who's a little sad that things seem to not be working out tonight. Oh, hopefully, well. hopefully that doesn't signal the end. For those who uh, who didn't get the tease, we were going to... Well, we talked about it on the site Facebook. We were going to interview uh, Drombor, the current <laughs> producer of the Pokemon Symphony, mm-hmm. and the former producer of the Zelda Symphony, I think for the 25th anniversary, which was the very first one, and then the season one and season two. Uh which obviously right now I think that's ran by what what's that guy's name again? Jason Michael Paul. Yeah, He's Jason the, Michael yeah, Paul. Guy. Yeah. So, uh, and, and who knows? Um, I, I guarantee we're probably never going to be able to interview that guy. I've actually requested an interview with him before. He didn't really seem too keen to the idea. <laughs> okay, I'd rather have Jaron anyway. But Jaron's so. a great guy, and uh, I have never actually been to the Zelda. Really? Symphony, any of them? I've None been them. to every time they've come to Dallas. I've. Seen yeah, them the, and the Pokemon Symphony. Like, I'd like to say, oh, they just don't come to my area because, hey, I live in, like, northern Wisconsin. Like, that's not an area they come to. Well, they actually do come to Minneapolis, which is only an hour and a half away. So it's well worth the trip to go to a Zelda Symphony. I just, every time it's scheduled, I forget about it. And then it's coming up, like, oh, man, it's happening this weekend. I should get some tickets quick. And then I realize I don't have any babysitters. Uh, I could babysit. 
I want to take my girlfriend with, um, and let her experience, you know, this really unique um, thing. Because she's not really big into Zelda, but I think she would learn to appreciate a lot more of what I do here at Zelda Informer. Um, but if she got to go see that it could be more than just playing these games on the screen, like, you know, just yeah. the sounds and everything. I took my fiance to it, and she really enjoyed it, so. Yeah, I think it's something that uh, she would really appreciate um, and actually learn to appreciate more of what I do because sometimes she has a hard time viewing what I do as work. Um, makes things a little complicated when you work from home. But. See, here's the thing, too, is that there's there's two ways you can go about going to one of those symphonies, either the Pokemon one or the Zelda one, mm-hmm. is you can either cosplay or since it's a symphony, you can dress up really, really nice. So you could be yeah. like, oh, hey, and what we, are we doing we... tonight? Oh, well, babe, we're, I'm taking you to the symphony, so it's going to be really fancy, and then we're going to go to, like, McDonald's. Yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> What do you mean McDonald's? Oh, I kind of spent all my money on these tickets. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's actually so. Um, maybe next time it comes around, um, I'll, I'll go to it if uh, in Minneapolis, especially if I find out it has Breath of the Wild music. Um, that would instantly make me want to go, uh, especially since that game doesn't come out for a while. <laughs> uh, so speaking of Breath of the Wild, let's just get right into. The usual starting thing I like to do, and let's talk about Zelda. And believe it or not, we actually have Breath of the Wild news. Um, no, it's not showing off anything new in the game, so sorry. <laughs> uh, but it's more more like insight into some of the development behind the scenes, uh, which is always wonderful to get, and it's usually not insight we typically get before the game even comes out. So there was an interview uh, done in Japan. I forget which publication it, it was, but the interview sat down with a bunch of artists um, that oh. have worked on Breath of the Wild. Uh, and some one of them, is in specific, worked also on Skyward Sword. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long these artists have been working at Nintendo or working on Zelda games because I just haven't had the time to research them. And unfortunately, artists usually don't get this kind of spotlight. Usually you don't get an interview that involves, like, artists behind a game. Um, especially from Nintendo. It's usually, it's Eiji Aonomu or Shigeru Miyamoto. You said it right uh, this or, time. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I know. Yeah, as soon as I switch back to the other computer, I'm going to say it wrong. <laughs> the new computer. It must be a computer-related thing. Um, actually, I, I've been, I practiced trying to say that before the podcast. Into a anyway. mirror just over and over again. Um, so... Oh, did I even start the timer? Okay, I did. Uh, I'm not that I'm worried about going over time with just two of us here. but um, So, the very first uh, part of this interview that I want to talk about is the one that's generated the most, I guess, controversial controversy at Zelda Informer among our fans. Um, and this comes, uh, this is a statement made by Takumi Wada. I- I'm sure I butchered that. I don't know how it's pronounced in, you're, in you're, Japanese. You're one for two now, I guess. One for two, because I... I mean, this is how it looks like it's pronounced to be in English. So, and that means it's totally wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So he was talking about uh, why he was the person who created uh, one of the official pieces of art, like the very first official art that got released for the game that depicted Link shooting a bow. Um, It's one of the most common art pieces out there. We use that on a lot of our our Breath of the Wild related posts. A lot of other um, internet artists, I I don't want to call them internet artists, but that's where they share their art is on the internet, um, have like basically copied that exact art in their own style. Uh, So it's very common. I'm sure you guys have seen it. In the video, I'll probably pop up a little picture of it quick. Um, And he, in designing that art, well, the biggest controversy in that art that exists at the time is that it did not have Link's green tunic on or his hat. Um, which is something we have not actually seen in Breath of the Wild at all yet. And here's what he had to say about um, the choice of creating the art in that direction and not having the iconic clothes. And he said, Not having Link's iconic green clothes and triangular hat in the main illustration was a brave decision. But the concept that Link changes various clothes in the title was decided from the start. So this design, first and foremost set about to show symbolic, symbolically that this is a different every time. That it is different every time. That, you know, your experience with the game, the clothes you wear, you're never going to really be doing wearing the exact same stuff every time you play the game. Um, so this kind of blew up because 
people are kind of mad that there's no green tunic so far. That we know um, of, yeah. Yeah, like this, the, the, people are almost taking these quotes a little out of context because the official art was done in a way to um, highlight, obviously, the blue tunic, but also highlight that this is not your typical Zelda game. And, yeah, you're going to have different clothes. And that's a concept that was apparently there very, very early in development. It wasn't something they just decided later on. It was something they wanted to do. Um, so uh, ju- just to kind of throw a, li- a little bit of my side of this out here about people taking it out of context, uh, Nintendo has never said the Green Tunic's not going to be in the game. And this would not be the first nor the last Zelda game where you do not start out having the Green Tunic. Um, it might be the game, the only game out there where there's no point in the game that requires you to wear the green tunic. Um, so it could, for the first time, ever be completely optional. In fact, it is because it was confirmed that you can leave the Great Plateau without wearing it. And since you can go directly to the final boss, once you do that, you obviously don't need to wear it to beat the game. So it is optional if, if it even is in the game. Um, so... Some people took this kind of quote from uh, Takumi here and combined it with me with Shigeru Miyamoto, saying that, oh, he doesn't know. Um, he said he wasn't even sure if it was in the game. One second here, I got a cough. <laughs> if you're watching the video version, you just saw me like, hack up a lung. <laughs> um, I, I muted it because I didn't want it to come through it's on the okay. mic. But I it, clear my throat all the time. Well, I, uh, I, I've been fighting a cold here for the last two weeks. Anyways, so... Uh, because Shigeru Miyamoto said that and a, and a thing to point out with Shigeru Miyamoto is that this is the first Zelda game he's not really involved with so he's not going to know if the Green Tunic is in the game because he's not making the game so he's not supposed to know if it's in the game um, the only way he would know is if he directly cared enough to ask about it <laughs> and he doesn't really care that much if you guys remember back at the Game Awards footage which was the first gameplay of, of this game shown off he also, Shigeru Miyamoto also said, oh, hey, Epona and Eiji Inoma did not, like, correct him. But that horse didn't look like Epona that we've, that we've <clears throat> known and loved. It, it, did not, it, just, it was a brown horse. Uh, and we find out at E3 that you can tame wild horses. So it's kind of like, yeah, Shigeru Miyamoto doesn't really know what's going on <laughs> with this game. So you, whatever he has to say, unless it's very, very specific, like, yeah, this is legit, like, saying that this is in the game. Um, yeah, th- those one-off comments he makes, don't put too much stock in them. So he's, he's you know, A.G. Aonomu has not come out and been like, yeah, there's no green tunic in the game. In fact, he hasn't really talked about it at all. Um, which is very interesting. Um, I'm very surprised that there has, wasn't a lot of interviews that asked him about that. But you know what? The demo was so amazing, they probably had a zillion other <laughs> questions that were more important than, oh my gosh, is he going to wear green in this game? Um, so, is this a big deal? It is uh, the one thing in the Zelda series that has never changed. Link has always had his iconic green clothes at some point. But we don't know for sure that he's not going to have it at any point in the game. Well, this will be we, what we do know for sure, though, and I, I mentioned it before, is that if, even if it is in the game, this will be the first time it's not, it's not required. required. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be in the game. Um, and even... Well, but that, that, big, that brings to the question, though. Over the years, I mean, early on in the games, the, the clothing didn't really... I mean, the green tunic didn't really matter. It didn't mean anything. It was just to symbolize just, that he was the hero. Yeah. Um, and later on, it's starting to take on, you know, it's the hero's clothes. It's, it's got a bunch of symbolism behind it. Um, it's important. It means something. Uh, and if it's optional and not required, uh, it kind of, for some people, it might take away the uh, the importance behind it, I guess. Even if it's iconic, that would be the only reason that you might even wear it, is just because it's iconic, not because it actually makes a difference in the game. Um, I mean... Like, it, it, it's very... I mean, no matter what, even in the game or not, it's going... It, it's a very different representation. Well, the game is entirely a different representation of the Zelda series as a whole anyways. So, I mean, you kind of have to look at it like that. Like, the whole game is going to be different from traditional Zelda uh, formulas. So, you know, they're, they're doing almost everything different with this one. So, it's it, not that it's natural that there's a different aesthetic to Link. Um, and 
I wouldn't be surprised if we did, I I'd be surprised if we didn't see the tunic in the game in some shape or form. Um I I wouldn't be surprised. I mean like I'd be surprised if it wasn't at least like an optional thing that you get like maybe even if you get it on a uh like a new game plus type mode kind of like if you play through Wind Waker a second time and you get the oh, yeah. the invisible the tunic. Um, oh okay. Yep. That you get it kind of like that, um, but I, I feel like it's going to be in the game somewhere somehow, even if it's not necessarily addressed. Like it could be in an Easter egg in a shop or something. I, I don't know. But yeah, I, I, as I was say, I don't know if it's going to be in the game itself because I kept thinking clothing in this game has like a purpose. Yes. It, you know, there's temperature. And, it's not just aesthetic. Yeah, it's not just an aesthetic thing. Although obviously. You know, you can craft certain types of food items. So, like, if you want to do a naked run, it is possible. Um, but reality is that... Yeah, naked. Well, <laughs> boxer. You got like, something boxer on. Link for, yeah, boxer link for, for the whole adventure. <laughs> it is possible. Like, Nintendo did think ahead. Be like, oh, some people are going to want to try to do that. Well, let's, you know, let's give them that option if they want to go that road. Um, it'd be more difficult. You have to get hunt, hunt and gather more and, and play around with cooking. But... Uh, it's interesting to me that it is possible that it's not in the game. Uh, and if it is in the game, it could be like a cameo. It might not even be something you can wear. It could just be a picture of your former life where you were wearing it. Um, because after all, this is a resurrected Link um, who well, has been asleep for at least 100 years. And it's very possible he was a hero before. And had the tunic then, and then maybe there's a story element about how he had to give up the tunic for some you know, for some reason, um, and so you could end up seeing a picture, like a painting that has, a, or or a statue that kind of shows Link wearing it. Although, you know, if it's a statue, it might not be colored, so it it's, might not look yeah. green. But but you could very much tell that. Oh yeah, that's the classic tunic right there. Like that looks like it. Um, you know, and that might be the only way we might see it in the game. Uh, obviously, we don't know. It, it could very well be in the game as an optional thing you get from a side quest um, or something you could just find out in the world uh, as you're digging into your past, uh, which is what, what it seems like a lot of the story in the game um, seems to be pushing towards is all this optional story stuff is all about digging into what happened. Why were you asleep? What happened to Hyrule while you were asleep? I do have... There's something that I haven't seen talked about but that I just kind of realized that... Since and this is kind of way off topic from the tunic thing, but it's another thing that I think is going to be missing from the game that nobody's really talked about. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, is that in the very beginning of the game, or at least the E3 trailer, the E3 gameplay, is we see the voice actress or voice character say, wake up, Link. Mm -hmm. And so does that mean that we're not going to get to name the character anymore? Because... Uh, ent entirely possible. Uh, the fact that there is voice acting at least for one character so far. Um, one character that deliberately says a name. There's no. I, I doubt they have a voice engine in there to try yeah, to I don't, I don't think any they name either. you put in. Um, it's very clearly going to be Link. Uh, I kind of see it as, no matter what we've named our character, and no matter how much Nintendo has said, we are Link. <laughs> so um, Link is Link and always will be Link. Um, as Nintendo has said, he will always be the person starting in the main games. So, I don't think it matters. Like, I think they still might let you name the character wherever you want, but you're not going to be confused when it says, you know, wake up, Link. Yeah. Because um, I, I just don't see them taking away the, the ability to do that, especially in a game that lets, lets you customize things so much um, already. To take away, like, the only customization that has been there from the very <laughs> beginning seems really weird and pointless. Um, the voice acting, I guess you, you could say gives a point to it, but if it's only very few characters that audibly say, you know, your name mm -hmm. throughout the game, that, then it's, I don't think it's too big of a deal. Um, but you know, then again, I'm also a veteran, so you gotta kind of consider, okay, what if, what if someone's a first time player? Um, are they going to be confused? Uh, who the heck is Link? <laughs> I named him Bob. <laughs> Um, although the game clearly references to you, well, you know, I think it'll become obvious, but I can see how that might feel a little weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. You know, we, we don't know. I mean, Nintendo could try. You know, maybe, maybe if it's if you enter Link, it'll say "Wake Up Link," 
But if you're into uh, something else, it'll be like Wake Up Hero or something like oh, that. It'll, wake, it'll say Wake Up Hero, or it could just say Wake Up, and then the text box will have your name, but it just won't say your name. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's multiple ways I guess they could work around that and still keep it in the game pretty easily. Um, and just, obviously, if you want that full name voice acting, make sure you enter Link, and that... I, I'll probably... that If that's true, then I will probably always use Link, just because <laughs> I want to... Dude, I, girl, woman, Zelda, whoever you are, say my name. Navi. Say my name. Not, hey, listen. <laughs> Tell me to wake up. Tell me I got something important to do. I want to do it. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just really interesting. Uh, we have no idea what's going to happen with the green clothes. Uh, I think a lot of people are making much to do about zero new information. Just people that are already afraid it's not going to be in there and see another mention by by someone who is working on the game um, that they deliberately created art to not show off a green tunic. Um, again, this is all decisions that was made a long time ago, uh, so it's not really anything new. Um, it, it's new for us to know about it, but uh, it's not really giving you any insight into whether or not there will be a green tunic. Um, so, yeah, the, the, I mean, that's, that's one interesting part from this interview. Uh, the other one... The one that I actually find to be uh, more interesting, but it seems to be less talked about because it's not as controversial. Because, you know, co controversy makes people, even though the controversy is totally made up in their head right now. <laughs> um, this one also comes from an artist working on the game named uh, Satoru Takazawa. I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced in Japan, but I don't have a pronunciation gui guide for it right in front of me. Uh, you know what? I should start doing that more often. I should start looking up. I should like start putting the pronunciations next to it in my document here. Um, so it says, The bow is a very important item this time around. Obviously talking about Breath of the Wild. And you can use it from the start. It is also very convenient to use. And it was even used symbolically in the 2014 promotional video. Producer, A.G. Aonomu, I'm sure I just pronounced it wrong again, <laughs> has been screaming... Course. I know. I, the first time I nail it, I keep getting worse like every time. Um, <laughs> has been screaming, I want to endorse the bow from the initial stages of development. Then he laughs. They, they laugh a lot at Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided easily on the direction of making the bow appealing. Uh, so obviously it's been no secret. Since 2014, the bow's a big deal. Um, it showed off a slow motion, flipping off the horse mechanic back in 2014 that wasn't even in the game yet. Um, and then they decided after that, yeah, that was really cool. Let's put that in the game. Uh, and now that's something you can just do whenever you feel like it. Um, obviously, you know, you have to jump and actually be falling, so you can't... Th th there are some tricks to it based on my experience with the game anyways to get the best use out of it. But uh, it's it's awesome. Um, well, what, what do you think about Nintendo and well, specifically, you know, the, the guy leading Zelda... Right from the get go, being hey, look, uh, the bow is a big deal, so let's let's make that the focus, like not about the master sword, or not about um, <clears throat> you know some random new item in the game, or a random specific character, like oh about a Twilight Princess, or about an Ocarina of Time. Uh, this is about the wild, and we want the bow to be what people remember the most, I guess, in terms of item, like in terms of combat in this game. Well, it looks like um, there's there's a few things to be said about this, um, and I don't know 100% if, first thing, if you can upgrade the bow at all, like if there's different ways you can change it. Um, I don't think um, there was in the E3 demo. I think I think Nintendo said that there isn't a way... I'm trying to remember. I don't, I don't remember the exact quotes. I remember them saying something along the lines that there is no way to repair or upgrade a specific item like say taking that little woodland bow you have and turning it into this awesome epic amazing one but there are there were like different versions of the bow that were stronger um that you could find and use i know that and it's possible that like you might need a specific bow that has a certain strength to be able to get a better bow um, that's hidden somewhere else. That that could be an upgrade yeah. path they could use. Instead of being like, oh, you take this over to the blacksmith and he adds some iron plates on it and now it shoots better. I mean, like, um, I could... In terms of that bow, the specific one that they've been showing off, 
since they announced the game with that trailer. Yeah, the the, the, the main one they've been yeah. showing. Yeah. And, and I think that that so fits in. The demo had, I'm trying to remember, from what I remember using, I used three different bows in the demo. We'll have to go back and look at that. And the one you, the one that you get to use right away in the one demo is just a basic wood bow. There's nothing special yeah. about it. But the one I think you're thinking of has like those uh, special design, like the, almost the triangular. Design. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that might be that might end up being like you know the most powerful bow or something. And I think that that, you know, them emphasizing emphasizing the bow, and that specific bow and all the promotional art, the one with the the Sheikah designs on it, yeah. kind of fits in with the theme of the game where it's not really about the highlands anymore like this isn't really about hyrule like it is kind of about how the whole land got to the state of disrepair that it's in um <laughs> mm-hmm. but like we're seeing the sheikah slate the shrines like everything seems to have to do with them even the technology used in the game um and so the bow kind of speaks to that as opposed to like something like the master sword which has always been a hylian weapon first and we're, we're seeing kind of a shift away from that. So I think that that would be... And what they're doing is smart if they're continuing to go with that kind of trend in the game where it's a Sheikah-centric story or theme in the game. To whereas, you know, Skyward Sword, where it was focused on the Master Sword and how sure. it became the Master Sword in a Hylian type of legacy. And I think that they're going along with that um, in the entire game as well. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong... Um, I know there was some speculation on some of the early imagery and stuff about, like, Link's cuffs and everything, like having, like, a Gerudo sign on him. Um, and obviously, you know, there's a potential long-standing history between the Gerudo tribe and the Sheikah. Mm-hmm. Um, if I remember right, uh, back when I was a kid playing Ocarina of Time, uh, which to me probably had some of the biggest emphasis on bow use um, yeah. up to that point, um, and again, it was mostly for puzzles. I mean, you could use it in combat, but it was, it was a, mostly a puzzle item at the time. Um, I remember that one of the 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 like when I think bow and arrow from Ocarina of Time, I keep thinking of that that mini game they had with the Gerudo, yeah, it, with the Gerudo at the Gerudo Fortress, and it's like, huh? There was some the last time the bow had like an emphasis in an area, that was it. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Link wasn't a Hylian in this game. I I. I could see him being a Sheikah. I doubt he'd be a Gerudo just because he doesn't have the dark skin. That and he... it could be, I mean, he could be a Hylian, but then um, was raised by the Sheikah? Something like that. Like 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 Princess Zelda, like when became Sheik, because she hit out with him for seven years or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it. I only say, I mean, obviously, we haven't seen enough of the actual Sheikah tribe um, to really know. We if just see, like, distinct, remnants. Yeah, like... Them. A distinct look i don't know i mean i guess those you know you could say maybe there's a distinct look because now we have shrines that have all these old like priestess like you know beings that were apparently sheikah or related to the sheikah in some way um but i'm not you know i'm not sitting here thinking man i see that and that's what that whole tribe is like because that's not the case impa is one of the most well-known sheikah out there mm-hmm um, and she has looked completely different in so many different games. Uh, she doesn't even have a standardized look. <laughs> um, so it's like, Highlands have kind of always had like a standardized visual uh, presentation to their, their yeah. look. And this Link still seems to have that visual presentation. Um, from the facial features to the, the pointy ears. Um, but then again, we don't really know if, if the Sheikah is like a race or, or if it's just, just a tribe of high high rule or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like the, they could just be a tribe of of Hylians that you know have magic abilities or you know whatever the case may be. We don't. There's so much unknown about the Sheikah. Like when you say who are the Sheikah, it's like well they protect the Triforce and the royal family sometimes. But like, but like only when they feel like it <laughs> and. Um, so there, there might have been like this bad thing that maybe sort of happened that's been hinted at that had to do with like the tribe splitting, but we don't really know if that's canon, and we don't really know anything because they've just been this super mysterious tribe for twenty plus years that we know nothing about. <laughs> um, maybe we'll find out in this game. And that that could be the, this is definitely the the first game, uh, in the series that is clearly, very clearly, not hiding the Sheikahs. <laughs> 
Like it's everywhere. The symbol is everywhere. Like this, you're the one of the main items you use in the game is the Sheikah slate. It's like man, Sheikah have to. The, if we don't learn anything significant about the Sheikah in this game, I'm going to be very disappointed. I don't man. think we ever will at that point if we don't learn about them from this game. Yeah, because you have Sheikah symbols everywhere. They're clearly something happened that involves the Sheikah, and it's just if we don't hear about it in this game, then I. I I mean, I guess if you go straight to the end of the game, maybe you don't hear anything. Yeah. But I think I, this, I, the game speaks uh, to like, just uh, not necessarily nostalgia, but the entire idea of all of these pre-existing cultures and tribes and characters that they've already made, um, and just using them again and bringing them back in a significant way. Like the Karoks are back. Like that's a something that came out of left field. <laughs> um, so like. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, like, maybe not the Zoras from, uh, maybe, I don't know, not Skyward Sword, <laughs> but if we saw them, for, if we saw, like, the, uh, ooh, the, is it the Ruto tribe? What in, about them? In, Rito tribe, sorry, that's what yeah, I'm trying Rito to think tribe. of. Yeah, Ru if, Ruto was a character. Yeah, I always get that confused. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them again, but... The fact that we're already seeing past characters and past cultures and tribes in this game, I think that the Sheikah are going to have a big emphasis, so I think we'll get some story about them, and I think... I swear, if it's like, th this is the game where they're all wiped out, <laughs> again, and we don't even see, like, outside of the ones in the shrines, don't ever see one, it's going to be like, or the only one we see is Impa. It's gonna again. Be like, are you, are you, are you kidding me? <clears throat> Are you, like, give me at least a flashback to their heyday or what something. What if they're like, all like, named Impa, ugh. and that's just what we're missing? Like, I want to know, with well, this big war, I, I don't care if I can't travel back in time, like the game, you know, like so many other Zelda games that let you do, and see what happened, but it's like, man, I, I at least want, like, a cutscene that, that explains it, or something. I don't know. Um, I've, Sheikah has always been, like, the one thing I really, really want to know, know a lot about, and I know I rag on Ocarina of Time a lot, but uh, the mystery that it, um, the further mystery that is built around the Sheikah in the game is actually something I really like. I hate that it's just never been explored. Wasn't it heavily, not heavily, but wasn't it built up upon in Twilight Princess, kind of? A little bit in Twilight Princess. It wasn't super huge in there. What's Skyward that? Sword had, had some big setup for it, but you know, that was all before um, you know, before everything else. And we yeah. don't really know how big a role they had before Skyward Sword. Um, and in Skyward Sword, again, it's just Impa, so we still don't really know, you know, we just know that it's just in Tribe, and it's been hinted at at one point being, like, this big, like, a big deal tribe, like, it wasn't just Impa, it was, like, this whole community. Um, Kakariko Village, in our yeah. period of time, was literally the home of the Sheikah, um, but yet we never can see more than one in the game. Now, granted, as I said, because of the shrines, there's a potential we're going to see at least 100 Sheikah, um, mm -hmm. but... Again, they, they, it seems more like remnants because they, like, poof in the air and are gone. So it might not be, like, you know, a living. It more it might just be, like, a spirit of them. I think it's weird, too, that they've all, like, it's been, quote-unquote, established that the Sheikah tribe have always served Hylia and Zelda, or the, the royal family. But every time we see a Sheikah, there's just one of them throughout, like, every single game. Mm -hmm. So it's like... Is their history just one person? Is the tribe just one woman that just keeps going yeah. from game to game, or, or what? Yeah, that never dies. Yeah, that just never dies. Even, even though she got ancient in Skyward Sword, which happened a hell of a long time ago. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, I don't know. It, the, I just the, I hope it explains a lot. Um, so one topic I just want to get to quick. It's not so much a topic. Um, it's just kind of something that happened at Zelda Informer in this past week. Uh. The Zelda Informer forums have, uh, quote-unquote, relaunched. Um, we say that because, really, uh, it's the Zelda Dungeon forums. The ZDI that have, forums. That are now called, the, the quote-unquote, the ZDI forums, um, that have been totally reskinned to match Zelda Informer. In fact, if you go to the forums, it says Zelda Informer at the top. So it's very hard to really, uh, unless you're in the know, as in, like, staff members, you probably won't be calling them ZDI forums. <laughs> you probably just call them the Zelda Informer forums if you come from Zelda Informer. If you come from Zelda, you'll just call them the Zelda Dungeon forums. But either way, it's a combined forum community between 
two of the three largest Zelda sites in the world. No surprise, both of those sites are owned by the same person now. So um, the forums is one thing he wanted to combine, and the Zelda Informer forums have been down for a, a year or so. Uh, ever since we switched servers, it kind of broke things, and uh, yeah. And I, and to anyone who used to be part of the old forums, you know, check your emails and your spam folders. I did send out a uh, email about the new forums uh, because we didn't just you know announce, hey, the forums are back, go check them out. Uh, we're doing a giveaway to kind of promote um, new member activity and get you guys back involved. And these forums um, are actually active. They're not like the old Zelda Informer forums where it was like three or four people. Um, it already had 95 active members before we ever promoted anything. And I know in the last four days, there have been over 175 new registered members that have made at least one post. Um, so the forums are like booming right now. Now is the time to get in. When everyone else is getting in, get acclimated, um, have a good time. There's a lots of Breath of the Wild talk going on there, uh, even more so than we talk about on the podcast, if you can believe it or not. Um, and obviously, they don't just have that forum games, um, an RPG thing, I believe they have set up. They have Mafia. Um, Mafia, yes. Mm -hmm. I've never really got into the Mafia thing, but some people have said it's a lot of fun. Um, because of what I do at Zelda Informer, I probably don't have the time to really get deep into that, but it, it looks a lot of fun always wanted to do something like that maybe if i ever retire i'll get, i'll be really active on the forums you know most people um, like play checkers or chess nate just lurks forums and plays mafia <laughs> but no you will see me on the forums i'm usually in the su the suggestions forum trying to listen to what feedback people are giving um and then I, I i pop in at some of the breath of the wild threads i care about um and in the, in the general forum so it, it is a great way um to you know get to see what i do outside of like, because what I do on there, I don't really call it work. That's not what I'm paid to do. I'm not paid to, like, be active on those forums. That's just something I like to do, be involved with the community and talk directly with you guys. Um, and so are a lot of the Zelda former staff. Because all the Zelda former staff are required to be registered on the forums because we <laughs> use them for staff-related reasons. Alfred laughs because he might not be registered. I am registered. Yet. I have posted okay. on there. Don't, okay. don't okay. go throwing, okay. I, throwing rocks I, at me. I, I, well, like, everyone changed, like, their usernames when they registered on there, so I don't recognize them. I think name. mine's just anyway. Alfred. I think I was like, Pro you know, probably. just screw it. <laughs> well, yeah, just like mine's just Nathaniel Rumpeljance. Yep. It won't be hard spotting me. Um, so, uh, so, as I said, we're, we're doing, like, this big giveaway. Um, there's uh, three kind of sections to this giveaway. First is guaranteed prizes, uh, and these are for brand new members only. So literally, if you have not been part of these forums ever, make a new account and do the these following things, and you will get a guaranteed, I believe it is a link plushie. Guaranteed, no matter how many people join. So if 7,000 <laughs> of you join and do this, which will probably make Massey's cry, because uh, he's want paying for all this stuff. I think that'd be funny, uh, though. You would get a guaranteed prize. Not that I think so, Massey's crying is funny, but I think it'd be funny. <laughs> it, it would be amazing. I, I would like to see us get to the point where Massey has to cry <laughs> over these Link plushies that he specifically selected because it's something he can offer that's cheap. But if 7,000 people meet the requirements, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem so cheap anymore. <laughs> he takes out a loan to pay off the guaranteed prizes. <laughs> but hey, you know what? That also means our forums are super, super active, um, and that's always good. Uh, so, number one, you got to register at the forums. There'll be a link down in the description to go do that, um, or just a link to the forums, and you can figure out how to register from there. Uh, you must make a, a post in the contest thread. Uh, so, there's a thread about the contest itself, and you have to put your favorite Zelda quote in there. So, we're all Zelda fans. I'm sure we all have our favorite quotes. Um, so, we'll put, I definitely will put a link down to that thread down in the description. And then, on top of that, you have to make a total of 50 posts during the month of October uh as of as of the time this podcast will be out it's, it'll be october 5th so you have 26 days to get that done um really not that hard that's a couple posts a day um there are some areas where the posts don't count for your post count um but those areas are you'll figure it out in a hurry i can't i think the forum games area yeah. is one of them where it won't that doesn't necessarily mean that when we're doing these prizes we're not gonna like if you make five posts in there and you're at 45 posts i'm sure we could figure it out oh he did make 50 posts because the contest rules don't specify that those forums don't count but on your actual post count um it won't show but what we, the system still hasn't logged so we'll be able to we'll be able to look it up um just keep that in mind um just post so, a lot that's that's all you yeah, need to do just post a lot and, and there's a lot there's a lot of people that are talking right now a lot of zelda fans a lot of zelda former staff a lot of zelda dungeon staff it's a great place to just talk about zelda um 
The second tier we got going on is a larger prize. Uh, and it says in addition to the guaranteed prizes, we're also offering a larger prize for new members only. Um, all new users who win a plush doll automatically get entered in the raffle. So you don't have to do anything extra besides what you did to get your plushie to get into this raffle. And then whoever wins the raffle will have a choice of a number of items because we don't just want to like you know say, oh, it's only this item. And if you win it and you already have that item, well, then tough luck. Um, <laughs> So some of the options are a video game of your choice, up to sixty dollars. So obviously, no collectors lot, editions. You could do with it. Yeah, no no collectors editions, um, unless technically uh, the bundle for Fire Emblem Fates is fifty nine ninety nine. Yep. So you could get that. It just can't be over sixty dollars. So if it's like a three DS collectors edition that happens to be under sixty. That would count unless it's something that um, is never in stock. Or if you really want Massey's to buy you like a textbook or something, that's like $60. Just yeah. Yeah. You know, whatever. I, I mean, I'm sure he's, he's really flexible. Um, it could also, but, but here, here's the kind of the kicker with this though. Um, it could also be the legend of Zelda manga box set, which is a hundred dollars minimum. Um, so that's always something to consider if you want to get the best bang for your buck. Uh, and then the replica highly in shield, Oh, as as Yulia no, walks in. Hey, watch the swearing. This is the Zelda Informer podcast. Yeah, got to gotta watch it. Uh, bleep, bleep. Anyways. <laughs> um, I'm a little late on that one. So then, uh, yeah, I know. Well, I didn't know she was going to be swearing. <laughs> uh, and then the uh, replica Hylian Shield is also an option. I don't know which replica it is. Obviously, there's a lot of different ones out there. Um, I doubt it's like a $300 one. You're probably looking at like a $50 one off Amazon or something. I'm not 100% sure. Um, that's It'll either be wooden add. or metal. So yeah, you're not going to get like a foam one. It's one of those ones that you just got to ask ask him. It's only going to be one winner. Um, the grand prize, uh, which is the last tier, is going to be for all members of the forums, whether you're already part of the forums, congrats, or if you're new. Uh, to qualify for this prize, you do need to do a bit more than what the new members have to do. Um, you have to make at least 100 posts, or over 100, as it says, during the month of October. And all new and current users that qualify for this post requirement will be entered into a raffle. And in that raffle, you get to win a Ganondorf first four-figure statue. That's like a $400 Cost- value. Yeah, we said it's over $250. I don't remember what it costs right now. I think, I think it was like 280 the one that he was looking at. Yeah, they're, um, they're pretty expensive. They're, they're 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 really expensive and they're really awesome. I don't own any of them because when it costs more than the consoles to play the games, <laughs> on, I, yeah, I'm with you on that one. If it's not a I mean, pop I, figure, I probably don't have it. Like I have some of those ones from GameStop, um, but those were a lot cheaper than 250 bucks. Well, yeah, and sometimes they'll give like first four figures or Figma figures for like clearance at GameStop, but you're not gonna find like a high end. Ganondorf so, one, so. so some people might have questions about you know are there any restrictions to this like oh I'm from Bulgaria does that matter uh, no it does not the prize is going to be won by anybody worldwide so if you're from a smaller country no worries we will find a way to get it to you whether it's from a local retailer um, if we if they don't allow international shipping into that country I know some countries are really restrictive on that stuff um, additionally while we want to encourage activity we want the activity to be quality so the moderation team will be reviewing your post to assure that there is a degree of effort put into them. So don't come to the forum, spam it all up, or post, like, you know, just emoji posts <laughs> or, like, three three-word posts. That, that's it. We want quality discussion. Um, and just because there's so, so much activity right now, it's really not that hard to find discussions you're probably interested in because, hey, you're, you're listening to a, a Zelda podcast. <laughs> come on. You clearly want to talk about Zelda, or at least read or listen to other people talk about Zelda. Um so, oh, and also, some someone asked a question about shipping uh, on the Facebook page for it. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're from and how expensive shipping is; it'll be covered by us. So you don't have to worry about well, not by having us, to cover any, but by, well, like... by, by Zelda Informer, yeah. the entity, <laughs> or I believe it's, uh, it's. I'm trying to remember the. It, it, I mean, Massey's owns it, but his shell company. Massey's Incorporated. Shell. No, it's uh, a. <laughs> Dungeon Network or something. I can't remember. That sounds what? really bad. <laughs> I can't remember what, what it is. I'm and this is my Dungeon Network. Look I don't even remember these things. The, the company listed on my contract. <laughs> I don't even remember. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, it'll be paid by by the man. Um, so you don't got to worry about that. So that's that's really cool. Um, go check out the forums. I'm kind of, I know it was a really long ad, but um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's something cool we've done that we have not had in a long time. Um, 
me bust out uh, some topics here. Um, so I was thinking about talking about one of the uh, one of the daily debates we have. We just did a lot of talk with Breath of the Wild. Um, so I'm just going to bring up because uh, we only have a couple minutes here before I want to move on to um, our favorite things that happened in this past week, and uh, I just want to bring up a brief thing about NX. And I know I'm tired of talking about <laughs> NX too because we don't have any new information. But we did get uh, Ubisoft CEO coming out and talking again. 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 Uh, just saying that Nintendo's going to be back in the race with NX. Um, that's it. Didn't really say anything else. Uh, this was at an investors meeting when they were announcing their, I think their Q2 earnings or something. Um, and uh, there was like a Q, or he opened up one of his things by saying that, to just briefly mention NX, which is interesting that he brought it up. Um but again, Ubisoft has been pretty pro NX this whole time. They were pretty pro Wii U as well. Um, yeah, that's one of the things to consider is that Ubisoft is really liberal with their words, so they'll just say stuff like this and then yeah. not necessarily follow through with it. Like they were like, "Yeah, we're big Wii U supporters," and feel like we're gonna we have that proof of concept game, which is on Wii U, which was great, and then they just kind of stopped. So I well, I this is where um. Well, I mean, there, like, you, a, you've got your Just Dance reasons. and stuff, but... You got your Raymond Legends. But you didn't you get, got like, their... Assassin's Creed 3, you got Assassin's Creed 4, But Black those Black. really weren't, like, the definitive, like, better well, versions of the games. They were never going to be the definitive versions, because the Wii U wasn't as good as Xbox exactly. or PS4. But they were still really good, and they were better than the 360 and PS3 versions, well, yes. in many cases. Although... The 360 and PS3, I believe, got DLC, and the Wii U did not. That was the kind of thing that upset me, was the lack of DLC. Then again, the sales weren't very high, so they might not, like, okay, if, say, well, I think it was 400,000 bought Assassin's Creed 3. Well, if you figure 400,000 bought it, and only 10% of those people ever really buy DLC, is it worth porting it over for, you know, a, hand, you know, a few thousand people? Um, probably not. Probably not financially, anyways. Um... And in Black Flag, they just wrote it off right away that it wasn't going to happen. But Black Flag still one of the one of the better looking Wii U games out there. Yeah, um, they did they did a really good job. It's like they didn't get lazy with the ports. It just it, it, it didn't like, matter. It was never it, like, hey, we got you know this coming out for PS3 or PS4 or whatever it is. Oh, also it's coming out for Wii U, kind of a thing. <laughs> like you didn't yeah. really it wasn't like and, and thrown I, out and there. You know. Like when I said Raymond, Le- Raymond Legends, fantastic, and it actually sold best on Wii U. But there was controversy great. around that because it was supposed to be exclusive, and then because Zombie U didn't sell as well as they had hoped, um, and Assassin's Creed Three didn't sell as well as they had hoped, they kind of backed off on that, and then they were kind of jerks to the developers of the game, not really communicating with them. Um, so I'm not trying to paint Ubisoft as saints here, but no. Ubisoft compared to pretty much every other AAA developer out there, <laughs> at least tried. They, yeah, they, they created a, a, a then exclusive game, which some people are like, oh, well, Zombie U is not exclusive anymore. Yeah, but if you want the I mean, best come, version of that game, you should probably it, play it on the, Wii U. The, the best version is on Wii U, uh, even despite the, the bumped up FPS and graphics on the other side. It doesn't matter. It's missing like a core mechanic to the game, yeah. and what they replaced it with works. It's just not as good. It, Zombie U is one of the few games on Wii U that actually prove the concept of the game pad. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you haven't played Zombie, you go. I think it's a great horror game. I know it's got like a seventy-six score on Metacritic, which isn't terrible. It's just uh, you know some people are kind of iffy on it, but a lot of people like it. Um, it's just one of those things where you have to. You, I don't know. It's a very I, niche game. I think you have I think to be Ubisoft. Into it. Ubisoft. Um, I give them props for supporting as long as they did. Um, I, I, I don't excuse the Raymond Legends snafu, mostly for the developers. I don't blame them for like bringing it to other systems. They have to make money, um, and if you're not making money on the Wii U, it's really hard to keep justifying Wii U exclusive games. Um, yeah, and that's the problem too. Is it wasn't like one of those games that you're like, oh, like, people are gonna go out and buy a Wii U for Raymond's Legends. Oh yeah. So you know, I, I kind of yeah, understand that, but still. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> you know, in the past. Uh, uh, I can't even pronounce it. Uh, Yves Gumont or whatever. I can't. I know I can't pronounce his name. It's okay. I'm really just keep going. Uh, he he's the CEO of Ubisoft, and he actually confirmed earlier about there is going to be more than like Just Dance. Like they have more than Just Dance in the works right now. Um, and he mentioned something about how they like new hardware that experiments because they like to experiment. 
And for the most part, he's kind of true. Ubisoft has been there for all those experimental harbor launches with something new. Um, Just Dance, as much fun as we want to make of, make of it, it was an experiment on the Wii. Mm-hmm. Well, it is worked. interesting to note, though, that they're not coming out with uh, an Assassin's Creed or Far Cry in the next few years. So, Or, or so they've said. So I wonder what well, they have up their sleeves there was for just the a, next. There was just an Assassin's Creed leak, I believe. No, it was. It, I thought it was leaked that they weren't making one, or that they were making one, but it wasn't coming out soon. So yeah, it's not going to be I like think, next year or the next year yeah, after that. Well, because they didn't release one last year, right? No. No. Well, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They it did. They, it was the... uh, Syndicate. Yeah, Syndicate. And then they, they said they were. They said they weren't. They were. They're going to take at least a year off. So that means none this year. We have, there was a recent leak about it, it being the game that people have kind of been asking them to do, like for the setting Egypt or whatever. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, all unconfirmed at this point. It's just a like an, an image that that leaked out. But last time this happened, it ended up being one hundred percent true. Um, it just makes me wonder what they're going to do for the NX. Yeah, if it's going to be more it, exclusive it, content. It, I'm guessing there'll be something experimental, um, based on whatever the NX is. Uh, obviously it'll be Just Dance, they've already confirmed that. Mm-hmm. Um, and who knows? Uh, they, they did confirm that Dishonored 2 would not be among the games because it's too far along in development to mm-hmm. even attempt well, to What's coming it. out in November, Which, too? Yeah, and that makes sense. Like it, as, as an NX user, I don't really want games that already came out. I want games that are coming out in the future, and I want them at the same time other people get them. Um, I know PC users get used to getting delayed a little bit, but... Um, well, that that's kind of the same territory with what happened like with Watch Dogs on Wii U. Um, when even Batman just, Arkham City didn't do too yeah. well on Wii U because it came out so much longer after Arkham City yeah. came out. It, it just the Wii U wasn't a priority. I mean, you could argue that the Wii U was lucky to even get it, which it kind of was because there really wasn't a market for it. But um, you know, there really wasn't a market for Watch Dogs either. But it, it's just. It, it is what it is. The only way you're going to build a market for those games is to release them when everyone else gets them. Yeah. Um, and you have to do it consistently, and you're not, no one singular game is going to build you that audience. Um, and, and that's why I kind of think it, if Assassin's Creed wasn't already on the way down, it, it actually might have shown some growth on the Wii U. Um, and Black Flag was actually one of the better entries, but again, at that point, they had already like you know made decisions ahead of time that was going to limit the sales, like the no DLC. So people are going to go, I'll go get it on PC then instead. Or, you know, or on, on your PlayStation 4s or Xbox 360s and all this stuff. Um, and that is one of the so, weird things is when you when a game does come out like that concurrently with the other consoles and still doesn't get the DLC. Like one of the weirder things, and this is kind of like a really like obscure thing to co- coincide with this, but the Lego Batman 3 game didn't get any of the DLC that the other games oh, yeah. got, which was yeah. really weird because it came out around the same it came out at the same time, just didn't get any of the DLC for the game. Sure. Um, so we don't know. All I, all I want from Ubisoft is you know, whether they give us a, uh, an exclusive game or not. Um, based on their history, there probably is. Maybe. I don't know if it'll be at launch, but the, there might be something in the works for the holiday, the first holiday season. Um, all I care about is that their future AAA games that they release on other platforms are also brought to NX at least for the first two years. Um and then, you know, obviously, if they're not selling well, they're not making any money by then. I totally understand. They are a company. They are a business. I don't blame them for abandoning the Wii U when they did, outside of Just Dance, because you, you got to make money. And if you give it to, if you give it, you know, a full two holiday period, like like they did, they they went two full holidays with the Wii U, didn't really make much money. You're gonna get out. Um, the NX obviously might have greater sales potential if it is a handheld hybrid because. Uh, the 3DS, even though it was the worst selling console, sold 60 million, which is a heck of a lot more than 12 million we use. So there's obviously a bigger market that share that they're probably going to get anyways just by it being handheld. So um, Ubisoft probably is going to see higher sales, you would figure, because there should be a higher install. I wonder what rate. Just Dance on a handheld would be like. Um, well, you can already kind of do it. I mean, you can only do it in your house, but you can play Just Dance on your Wii U gamepad. That's true. You can also play it with your phone. Or you could, yeah, you or could s- yeah. something like that. So it, it it works. It works. Obviously, it's yeah, personally it's a lot better on the TV. But again, <laughs> it's a it's a hybrid, so you can hook it up to a TV. Well, supposedly it's a hybrid, um, which is actually really weird. There was that weird. Uh, I don't know if you know that Obi Wan guy from YouTube. Yeah, he was freaking out over like this company that made something that looks exactly like what all the NX rumors are. 
um, last year that they, want, they were looking for a company to go into mass production, and they were on like Indiegogo, and then they closed their Indiegogo a month later. Um, and we haven't heard of anything about this thing since. So, the, so he was like, "Oh man, did Nintendo just buy it out from them?" And yada yada yada. I mean, it all seems very doubtful because um, Nintendo would have been working on the NX for years now. Yeah. Um, but it was really interesting because it had like it had like uh, you know a tablet type screen with you know you had the slide on attachable controllers that you could slide off and continue to use. You could dock it with your TV. Um, it didn't look like the controllers were necessarily motion controllers, um, but you could still use them when it was hooked up to the TV. Uh, it had um, one of the rumors for NX had something about a, a, a reversible camera, so you could face it towards you or you could face it away from you, um, and all this stuff. And this system had like all of that, um, so it it was kind of crazy. Probably not true. I don't, I don't know if we need to go much more into it. I just I know a lot of people on the internet have been talking about it. Um, I I just wanted to bring up that it, it is interesting, um, but I, I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so let's let's get into the final part of the podcast. As I said earlier, no fan topics this week because we kind of had different plans that fell through. Uh, let's talk about our favorite things from the past week. Um, Alfred, why don't you go? You go well, first. I'm not 100% oh, sure. Oh. Oh, I have Alfred, need, Al- Alfred needs some time. <clears throat> I have, I have something. So, um, this isn't necessarily gaming news related, but it is related to podcasts. I started a brand new podcast for Nintendo Prime. Um, we, I just call it the MP Podcast uh, because it does. It is going to cover more than just Nintendo, uh, but it's up right now. You can find it on YouTube if you type in NP Podcast, or uh, I'll put a link down to the the channel and the video. Uh, in the description so you can go check it out Uh, this podcast is a lot different than the Zelda Informer podcast uh, because Zelda Informer podcast is just a bunch of us individually in our homes uh, talking into a webcam (laughs) yada yada it gets all spliced together at the end um, when we have the ability to do that obviously with my computer issues we haven't done that for a couple weeks but um, besides that uh, this one is more of an in person podcast it is with me and a guy named Eric Moore who it's his birthday the day that I'm we're recording this so when you watch us Eric happy late birthday um, so me it's me and him together in a room uh, if you're interested on who Eric is I'll start of watch the podcast if you've been paying attention to our Zelda former podcast he was on our E3 special um, he was the person if you're watching the video on your screen he's on the far right which would have been my far left so the the opposite side of the four people on the podcast uh, so he's on it every single week with me um, so it's in person. It's in my house. I'm actually going to reorganize my office space to see if we can set up the recording in there because there's a potential we might live stream the podcast in the future, um, which might, which will help set it apart also from the Zelda Informer one. And then it also features a guy you guys know very very well, Darren, the managing editor of Zelda Informer. Uh, he is not on video at all. He will be at some point next year on that podcast. He claims a lot better at internet. <laughs> I just don't believe him. Um, and he's like a voice speaking from above. Um, it's all good times. We this week we this this first podcast we went through our top five favorite games on every Nintendo system ever released, um, besides Virtual Boy because none of us have played enough Virtual Boy to to say much about it. Um, so yeah, uh, you can go check that out. It's it's really cool. It's, it's got a lot different vibe here than we do at the Zelda Informer podcast. And obviously we talk about way more than Zelda, although Darren. I think he had a Zelda game on, like, every one of his top fives. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think if he even had a top five that did not include a <clears throat> Zelda game. Oh, and, and you, you can go on there and rage at me because I at one point I said Ocarina of Time sucks. So You say that all the um, time, though. So, yeah, I do say it all the time, but, like, I, it sounds really bad in that pod. There's almost, like, a full-on argument about it. Um, <laughs> so go, you can go check out uh, that podcast. Enjoy. Uh, that was my favorite thing from the past week. Uh, there was a, obviously there was some cool stuff and news happening, but um, there's, I want to kind of give a little plug for my personal project. Hey, you like this other form of podcast? You're probably gonna like the Nintendo Prime podcast. Uh, did did you figure out anything that you yes, like from this week? I uh, did. Okay. So I don't know if this is good or my favorite, but it's a thing that happened this week sure. that has gotten me thinking. And J.J. Abrams announced that we should be seeing an announcement or he hoped for an announcement for a portal movie soon and uh, 
We actually talk about that in the Tinder Prime podcast. Too. I was it's pretty cool. When I heard about that, I was like, oh, that's, at first I'm like, oh, that's great. We're going to get a portal movie. And then I was like, oh, how would that work? Because that'd be like <laughs> making a Zelda film. Because yeah, it's we like, cho- well, it'd be even, no, see, a Zelda film, you could kind of sort of see. You, like, you there's could. like a deep story. There's like story with Zelda that you could somehow make enough of it to do something. Even if it doesn't include Link, like say it, it's actually just about like Sheik during the seven yeah. years. That could make sense. That could work. Portal, I mean, what's it going to be about? You shoot up, you shoot one portal on the yeah, ground, one on the ceiling, and you just fall through a constant loop for an hour and a half? Well, I, I just like, because <laughs> it's... You'd have to somehow adapt the game, and I could see them doing, like, a first half hour of, like, Cave Johnson's Descent to Madness, spoiler alert, oh Portal 2. Um, oh and then, if he was played by J.K. Simmons, even better. But see, here's the thing. And I, I, I did mention this. I think it was me that mentioned it on the Nintendo Prime podcast. I said something about, you know, it sounds, like, I, really weird that they could even somehow try to make this work. Like, the, the, in this report was also that there was a Half-Life movie in the works. Which I can actually see. Like, I can see a Half Life story, film. There's story there. Um, Apparently, we're not getting Half Life Three. We're getting Half Life yeah. movie, uh, or it'll be Half Life Three the movie. Um, <laughs> no, that would that would Half Life so Two Episode mad. Three the movie. It would automatically tank because everyone wants the game, not the movie. Um, It'd be a but, Telltale interactive game. Telltale interactive game. <laughs> yeah, you get it on your smartphones and anyways. Um, so they're making a movie out of Tetris, a three yep. like a trilogy for Tetris. So, and if they could do that for Tetris, Portal doesn't seem that crazy to me. Yeah, like but, that. like, you have more... Not that you have more artistic freedom with Tetris, but there's, like, no plot. It's kind of like when they did the Battleship movie. That was Wait, awful. There's no, there's no expectations for the plot because one doesn't exist. Exactly. But Portal kind of has a plot to it. Sort of. Like, kind of, yeah. As, I mean, it's very thin. Well, as, it's not really... You don't play the games because of the plot. Let's put in, it that way. In the first game, I wouldn't say there's that much of a plot. In the second game, there was more, yeah. but yeah, you're more, more of a facilitator second. for the plot. Like, the main plot was, like, Wheatley, Cave Johnson, and uh, Gladys, and you just kind of helped things along. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they would do. Like, again, I'm, I'm not sure what they're doing, and plus... I just hope it's not, like, uh, like, um... Because, you know, there, there's a lot of line or a, f- a handful of lines that I remember from Portal that kind of became mamies, you know, the cake is a lie. Yeah. Um... I just hope it doesn't become one of those where they just try a bunch of one-liners like that. I what I'm hoping, and I, think I hate is... films that do that. And if they do that with Portal the film, I'm going to be like, okay, is this a, is this an Adam Sandler movie now? <laughs> one of the <laughs> things that I could see them doing is they wouldn't announce it until after Assassin's Creed was released because sure. they'd want to see the reception for that before they moved into production or pre-production for this movie. Because not that that's kind of like the saving grace for for video game films right now but it kind of is because warcraft well, tanked yeah warcraft tanked uh for, i haven't seen it yet from what i, I heard either. from what i heard fans of warcraft like the movie yeah people who don't know anything about warcraft are lost and confused which makes a lot of sense based on what i heard how the story goes i don't know the whole thing because i need to watch it no well, it's kind of like I, I was told i'm gonna love it but it's not good for people who don't like Warcraft. Well, that's kind of the thing with, like, and people are probably going to get mad at me for saying this because I actually like this movie, but Batman v Superman was mostly aimed towards comic book fans. Like, I went to go see it with my fiancé, and there was one scene with uh, Robin's suit in it, and she was like, I have no idea what's going on there. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's when the Joker killed Jason Todd in Death of the Family. And she's like, I have no idea what that means. I'm like, I know. Um, and so the problem is, is that you have uh, to... Let me try to explain this to you, but I can't because there's not enough time. We're watching a movie. You have to aim the movie at, like, a general audience while still appeasing fans. And yeah. That's... yeah. Warcraft didn't do that. Warcraft just aimed, like, this is for Warcraft fans. Period. Assassin's Creed can do that, and I'm, I'm really hoping that it's good because I feel like that's kind of, like, the last hope we have for video game films. Not that I think it is. Like, aren't we getting another Tomb Raider movie at some point? They've already cast Pro- the lead actress for Probably... That. Probably yeah, I think they casted an actress. Um, yeah, I you know I don't know if it'll. I don't really consider it like the last hope because as long as video games keep becoming a bigger That's and bigger true. deal, I mean the Angry Birds movie ended up doing pretty good at the box. At I still want to see it. I've heard it's really funny. Yeah, it, it is really good. Uh, my kids like it. I thought it was was pretty funny. Um, you know, and I'm not necessarily like a big Angry Birds player. Like <laughs> it's a game that doesn't really have a story, so it's okay. Um. And that somehow they made it work. I mean, even with, like, you know, how the birds do different things in the game. That's in the movie. Mm-hmm. It's just cleverly put into the movie. 
in a, in a pretty comedic way. Um, so it, it's you know even the whole fact that that angry birds like it, it's it's just got this really clever thing with anger management and like all the birds are supposed to be happy go lucky and it's just it's funny it, it's just it, it's a cute movie um, but that's the thing like obviously that's an animated movie. Uh, animated movies have tend to have done better for video games than yeah. live action. Um, but then again, like those Tomb Raider movies, I had uh, Angelina Jolie. Uh, Angelina Jolie did good at the box office. They made a, like a trilogy out of that. Like mm-hmm. it, it did well. The Resident Evil movies, they're did still well. going. They're, yeah, it's they like, got the trailer for the new it, one. It, it's like you might not think those movies are good, but enough people do that they're making money off of mm-hmm. them. Um, and that's kind of the big thing with with video game movies is one. As long as they're making money, they're going to keep doing it. Now, uh, I believe it was Ubisoft came out and said they don't care if they make any money in the Assassin's Creed movie. <laughs> well, that's them just preparing for the worst. Yeah. Because there's always a high chance video game movies are going to bomb. Assassin's Creed itself didn't leave in a good place the last time that we saw a game from it. Well, Syndicate um, did. Unity didn't. Yeah, Syndicate Syndicate wasn't bad. It- it kind of like launch, it had bugs when it launched, that but not have been there. nearly not as, as bad. Not as bad as Unity. Unity like, was terrible. It, Unity took it on a huge, like steep downcline, and then Syndicate like brought it back up a little bit. But that's kind of where it's at right now. Unity and Syndicate, um, outside of the bugs, the only issues I have with those games is, you know, I know a lot of people don't play Assassin's Creed for any of the futuristic stuff, but those two games are why people don't do it. They kind of ruined the futuristic yeah. stuff. Yeah. So the whole reason you're doing any of this is kind of like gone now, um, and that's one thing I liked about like from you know Assassin's Creed all the way actually through Black Flag, um, it felt like there was an overarching reason for what you're doing outside of just being a badass, <laughs> um, and they kind of got rid of that with Unity um, and uh, Syndicate. So Syndicate, by the way, is not a bad game. Um, I don't think it's one of the best Assassin's Creed games. It's better than Unity. Um, it's better than Assassin's Creed Three. Uh, so it might I don't, it might be better than cut out on me. Uh, oh, can you not hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, All right. Obviously, we had some technical difficulties. Um, we can't get the call going again. It could be my router. It could be internet on his side. We don't really know what's going on. So that's going to do it for the Zelda Informer podcast. Again, I thank you guys for watching. Obviously, you can check out the Nintendo Prime podcast. Uh, I'll have all the links and various stuff to that maybe in the, this video here or down in the description on the audio version. Uh, you can follow Alfred at Full Metal Elfie on Twitter. You can follow me at Nate Chance. Obviously, follow Zelda Informer. All the places that we are, you just type Zelda Informer, you will find us. Uh, have a great day. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.